Hello, and welcome to Dad Got This. And today, I'm going to correct one of my earlier mistakes on the Ninja Wood Fire Grill, and that was cooking ribs. I messed them up the first time. I'm getting it right this time. Let's do it. Ninja sent me this wood fire grill. I didn't have to pay for it. I didn't have to send it back. However, Ninja doesn't pay me to make any of these videos. They don't get any input on anything I say in any of these videos. I'm not paid brand ambassador for Ninja or anything like that. Just wanted to let you know that right up front, one of the very first things I cooked when I got this wood fire grill was some ribs. I love me some ribs. However, I feel like I messed them up. They came out pretty dark. They were a bit overcooked. Wasn't very happy with them. I have since learned some things over the many, many cooks I've done on the Ninja Wood Fire Grill. And I think we can get some perfect ribs out of this grill. And we're gonna use a really cool rub to do it. This is some maple bacon coffee from a company called Warpath Coffee. Got three tablespoons of our maple bacon coffee. Two tablespoons of some sea salt. Two tablespoons of smoked paprika. One tablespoon of chili powder. Don't worry, one tablespoon across all these ribs is not going to make your ribs spicy. Two tablespoons of light brown sugar. If you have dark brown sugar, you can use that too. Got one teaspoon of thyme and a half a teaspoon of coriander. One teaspoon of black pepper. One tablespoon of granulated garlic and one tablespoon of granulated onion. And two teaspoons of MSG. It's just gonna give it a great flavor. Throw your lid on there. Oh, that smells fantastic. Now we gotta prep ribs, but before we do that, we might as well set up our smoker so that way that's getting ready while we're prepping our ribs. Setting up the wood fire grill, super easy. For today's smoke, I'm gonna be using the Kona Sweet Wood Blend. I think it's gonna add a nice sweet flavor to the ribs. I love these Kona pellets. Uh, you can get them in a multi-pack variety with a bunch of different flavors. They're not too expensive. Now, if you're used to like a regular smoker where you're buying like big 40 pound bags, yes, these can seem expensive, but on a little hopper where it uses a tiny bit like this, getting a variety pack where you get multiple flavors, it's nice. I like these, I put a link down below. Ninja says you have to use Ninja pellets in their in their smoker. I recently did a video where I tested a couple of different pellets. I did these, I did ninjas, I did a big old value bag from Walmart. Interesting video, you might wanna check it out. You might be able to uh, see a little bit of information on whether you really do need to use ninja brand pellets. This might give you a hint. All right. Now, here is something you might see. I've got some old pellets from a smoke in there. You might be tempted to go, hmm, just use these. No, don't use these. You're not gonna get a good smoke. These have been sitting outside. They're probably a little moist from the humidity in the air here. Not a good idea. Always use fresh pellets. We're gonna grab ourselves a nice full hopper of pellets. We're gonna do the dad shake. That's where I just give it a little bit of a shake. I feel like it gives a little bit of air and separation around the pellets. Probably does nothing, but I do it every time. Pellet hopper inserts right in there, just like that. Real simple in the back of your wood fire grill is a drip pan. I like to take some aluminum foil. Just line the inside with aluminum foil. It makes cleanup a lot easier. It'll save you from damaging your drip pan like I have. It just slides right in the back, like so. As far as time and temperature goes on these ribs, the first time I did ribs on the Ninja Wood Fire Grill, I followed a normal smoker recipe of about 250 degrees and that's normally like a three to five hour smoke. And I ended up going for three hours and my ribs were crispy, too browned and overdone. Didn't work out for me very well. Something I have learned over all of my cooks on the Ninja Wood Fire Grill is if you're following a normal recipe for a different smoker, the temperature and the time is normally a little too high and a little too long for the Ninja Wood Fire Grill. So I have learned to adjust my temperatures and my times lower and shorter. So for these ribs, I'm gonna start my ribs at 200 degrees and just constantly check them and go more off of the look of the ribs, looking for that nice smoky mahogany exterior and a bend in the rib versus just straight time. So we'll go ahead and set this onto the smoker setting. 
you'll see I don't have to hit the wood fire button because the flame is already on. We'll go to 200 degrees and we're gonna go to four hours and hit start. It's gonna say IGN, eventually it'll say pre, and then it'll say to add food. While we're waiting for this thing to get up and running, let's go ahead and prep our ribs. So this is a pork spare rib rack. We are going to cut it down into a St. Louis cut rib, which is just basically a trimmed version. We're gonna take a couple pieces off. I wipe it down with a little paper towel because it's been sitting in that cryovac thing and it's got a little bit too much juices on it. The reason I like to buy the spare rib instead of the St. Louis cut, which you can buy, is they're a little bit cheaper and then you get the extra meat that you trim off that you can use for stir fries and such like that. It's just better and it's really easy to do. First thing you're gonna look at is see this little flappy bit right here? We're gonna cut that off. Find a bone right about there and cut that sucker right off. We're gonna go to the back here. There is this little flap of meat. Does not need to be there. It's not really gonna cook well for you on your ribs. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut that sucker right off. You can save this, you, like I said, you can use it in stir fries. Even if it's not stir fryable meat, you can save it, get yourself a grinder, make yourself some ground pork, delicious. The last cut we're worried about is we're gonna square up this edge. It's got a little bit of a taper on it. And we're gonna just gonna take that off. You'll feel some bones around here. This is where you get what you call rib tips. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut that off as best as we can. There is a very strong, heavy bone in here. Make sure you have a good sturdy knife if you wanna to try to do this. All right, there's the big heavy bone. Go in as heavy as you think you can. That's what you call your rib tips. That's a little bit of chunky meat that we probably can clear off also. Now we have a nice little flat streamlined piece of pork ready to go other than the good old membrane. Now, I have been scoring my membrane. I get a lot of hate in the comments for it, but I found it on a lot of big barbecue channels. These guys do it and they say it works perfect and they are right. You do not have to remove it. If you want to remove it, get yourself a butter knife, stick it under there, grab a paper towel, rip. It works fine. But you can also just take a knife, get yourself a very sharp knife, do some hash marks. When this cooks up, nobody's gonna know the difference. They're never gonna know. We are ready to season with our rub. Take your rub. Get it a decent height. Start with your non-presentation side. I'm not using a binder. I don't feel the need for it on this. They're kind of wet already. I think it's gonna stick just fine. And then press in. Do not rub your rub in, just press it in. Give it a flip. And you're looking to coat it, but not like fried chicken coat. You're not batter deep frying this. You just want a nice coating Still seeing some of the meat is okay. And that's gonna be perfect, ready for the smoker. So we are about, I don't know, three bones shy. That's all we gotta cut off. We'll find a bone right about there. And then that's a snack. Those are ready to go. I don't know, we'll check on them in about every hour. Let's add one cup of coffee, cup of ketchup, half a cup of apple cider vinegar, three quarters cup brown sugar, two tablespoons of molasses, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of paprika, one half teaspoon of coriander, and then we're gonna stir that all up until it's nice and mixed. Get it to a simmer and let that simmer for about 25 minutes and you are gonna have an amazing coffee barbecue sauce. Are you enjoying this video? Well, there's a few simple things you can do to help me out. One, you could subscribe if you're not already. Two, you could give the video a like and hit that bell, all right? We are exactly one hour into this cook. Time to take a look at the ribs. Ooh, they look good. This is where it starts getting scary, where you're like, it's only been an hour. This doesn't seem right. I'm almost out of pellets, so it's about time to refill the pellets. And I'm actually gonna take a temp on these ribs. I wanna check. They're two pretty good tests. 
for ribs. One is the bend test, another one is temperature. Pork ribs are pretty much done and all the fat has rendered at between 195 and 203 degrees. So let's go ahead and take a temperature test first. We're only at 150, so we're okay. So on the ends here, we're at 160. So I guess it's a little hotter on the ends. Now, I know it's not going to be done, but we can, for fun, just to do a little test, we'll pick these up and we'll do the bend test. See how like, they're not really bending, they're staying pretty flat. It means these bad boys are not fully done yet. And they're looking a little dry in the top. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, my mister broke, so I'm gonna just actually brush them with a little apple cider vinegar. Normally I would spritz these, but my mister's out. So in the areas that are kind of looking dry, I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And you can see like this top section's looking a little dry, a little crusty. We'll just hit it with a little bit of that, almost like mopping. We're gonna rotate this. Move it around so it's in a little bit different section of the grill. And now we gotta top off our hopper and reignite our pellets. To top off the hopper, I just use this little soup spoon. I grab myself a scoop of pellets, open up the hopper, pour them in. And then you're gonna to wanna to hold your wood fire button for three seconds until the flame starts blinking and then it's gonna reignite your pellets. That way you'll get some more smoke. I'm gonna leave this at 200. I'm not gonna bump it up. I think they're doing well. They're looking pretty good. And we're just gonna leave them go here for another, I check them in 30 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and check on them. All right, they look really good. 155, 160, 160. I'm gonna hit these with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna close the lid. And I think at that point, I am gonna wrap these because I don't want them to get any darker than this. I am loving the color of these. We'll let these go in the smoke for about another 30 minutes. And I think we're gonna wrap them. We are going on exactly two hours right now that these ribs have been in the smoker. Let's take a look at them. They look to be the perfect color to me. 160, 160. Yep, they're not what I would call like super tender. They're a little hard when I poke that in there. They're not floppy like we want them, but they have the color we want them. So I wouldn't wanna just keep letting them go in this smoker like this. We are going to wrap them. For the wrap, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna go with aluminum foil. And we're gonna add a little moisture to this. We're gonna add some of our wonderful coffee barbecue sauce we made mixed with some apple cider vinegar so that it's not too thick. And we'll pour in a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of this coffee barbecue sauce that we just made. And then we wanna wrap it nice and tight. We want it to kind of steam in here a little bit. Throw it back on the smoker as we, after we move this guy. Little piece of tin foil for him. And at this point, we can actually kick up the temperature a little bit to speed up this process. We can probably go to, I don't know, let's do 275. I should get these done pretty quickly. We'll check them in about an hour. We are one hour into the wrap. Let's see how these things are looking. They're done. A couple of ways you can know that your ribs are done. The pullback on the bone. We have tons of pullback. The flop test, see that? See how bendy they are? Perfectly floppy. These are definitely done. We are gonna go ahead and set this to the air crisp setting. Now there's one thing, you can't just immediately turn to air crisp from the one or the other. You gotta go to off first. I always do it too. You gotta go to off and then we can go to air crisp and we'll go to 400 and we'll let it preheat. We're gonna get it let real hot. We're gonna throw a little barbecue sauce on this. 
Just go for a few minutes till it gets nice, tacky, and bubbly. Just brush it all over with your barbecue sauce. Make sure to coat it so it's nice and glossy all over. Then throw it back on the grill. We're going to let that go for like a minute or two max. Let's pull these. Now, I don't want to waste all this juice. Now, those are some delicious looking ribs. I'm going to try my hardest to let these rest for a little while, and then I will slice into them and give them a try. The ribs are done. They look and smell fantastic, but it is time to give him the ultimate test, the taste test. I'm gonna take this little bad boy right here. I'm not gonna add any extra sauce or anything. Oh my God, they're perfect. They have a perfect bite off the bone texture, a little bit of pull, but not like fall off the bone. You can kind of taste the coffee, you get a hint of that maple and the bacon and the spices, but it's not overpowering coffee. It's just really good. Wow, these are the best ribs I've ever made. Personally, that I've ever cooked, these are the best ribs that have come out. Now, I wanna try it a little bit. The sauce. Or a lot. Here we go. Ooh. Mmm. God, it takes it to another level. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh my god. Mmm. Oh yeah. They're smoky. They're they're porky. They're bacony. They're mapley. They're coffee. It's mmm. I I don't know how other to say it than just to, oh. These are really good. You gotta try these. And proves my point that I have learned cooking in this machine. You can't go off regular smoker recipes for the wood fire grill. It seems to cook hotter and faster. So if you're gonna try to alter a recipe to go in the wood fire grill, make sure you are cooking a little bit lower and knowing that it is going to cook faster than the recipe says. These cooked at 200 for two hours, then they wrapped at 275 for one hour. So total of three hours, and I got perfectly tender, not overcooked ribs that are amazing. So bonus, they cook faster and they're amazing. Did I say these are amazing? You gotta try these. You have to try these. If you would like to get anything I used in this video or you wanna know the exact mounts and ratios and everything, all that information is in the description below. There are also links to purchase your own wood fire grill. There's links to get the pellets, a whole bunch of stuff. There are affiliate links. They help me out. If you want to try that, that'd be great. If you click on them, I get a little bit from it. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps support this channel. I would really appreciate it. That is going to do it for me today. I have to resist eating all these ribs and I'm probably going to smoke another rack because this isn't going to be enough for the family the way these taste. We're going to go through these. Dad may uh, be getting ready to smoke an entire another rack of these because they're so good, but Dad doesn't do outros, so that's it. Bye. If you enjoyed that video, why not throw Dad a good old like and subscribe and do the notification thing or leave me a comment about what your favorite part of this video was. That would really help Dad out, and you can go check out one of these other videos. I'm sure they're fantastic. I mean, I, I made them, so I'm pretty sure they're fantastic. All right. Yeah, do that stuff.